everyone. Happy Friday. It is the Friday edition of Hashtag Malkin Live. And uh, as I have been doing since the day after Election Day, I'm bringing you information that is so vital to understanding the systemic stealing of our election. And this particular angle, the Dominion voting systems angle, uh, many of you have been uh, seeing a lot of information out there. It has made its way up to President Trump, Rudy Giuliani. Uh, I think there was one segment on Fox News about this, but uh, there is uh, a specific um, avenue of this story that I'm going to delve into with an entrepreneur, philanthropist, and um, political activist, Joe Altman, who's right here in my adopted home state of Colorado. And Colorado is one of the places that Dominion actually has a, a corporate headquarters office. And let me bring him in right now. Hey, Joe. Hey, how you doing? Thanks for having me, Michelle. Oh, uh, well, it. you are on Twitter, even though you're not on Twitter right yeah, now. We're yeah. live streaming on Periscope and YouTube and Facebook. And uh, so far, I've experienced a limited amount of throttling as I've brought stories from uh, independent citizen journalists and GOP poll watchers who have eyewitness accounts of uh, the fraud that's going on. Um, you were zapped last night by Twitter. And so I want to, to let you use this platform to explain what you've discovered about Dominion and uh, one figure, a uh, very key figure in particular, and then get your thoughts on uh, the deplatforming and censorship that's going on on people who are telling the truth. Yeah. So it's really, it's really actually a scary thing because when I actually started this process of, of looking into uh, voter fraud, I didn't never started it, right? It's not like I set out and said, hey, listen, I really want to find out what's going on with Dominion. Dominion wasn't even on my radar. Um, if, if you go back in time, I was, you know, I started an organization called FEC United um, that stands for Faith, Education and Commerce. And this just came out of what we're seeing happen, not in Colorado, but across the country where they strip away constitutional rights. Now, prior to that, I, I remained relatively silent or at least with my name personally um, in the space of just, you know, pursuing and making sure that we have constitutional integrity in this country but they started attacking me so these journalists started attacking me they started at attacking john tig tigan who obviously is a he's an american hero yes. and you know basically slandering him everywhere and so i wanted to know why like why would journalists actually come after someone as significant as tig in this environment so i set out to uncover uh, antifa within the journalist community so that's how it actually started that was and that's where this journey started. So if you go back in time to uh, the, the week of the 27th of September or thereabouts, right? Um, I was uh, out just infiltrating Antifa. I mean, I'll just tell you, I just used, uh, you know, I, I run a tech company. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm right of center. Uh, I'm a constitutional and uh, conservative Christian. Um, I wanted to know what we were really dealing with. So I got on this call and... In this call, you hear all this fascist, 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 all this stuff that's kind of going on and going back and forth. It's like a swirling of, of rhetoric. It, it's unbelievable how they speak to each other, by the way. Right? <laughs> it's, it's uh, you know, I don't, I don't think that they even understand how much they sound like Chicken Little. And, <laughs> and so uh, I listened for a while and then somebody named Eric um, came on and started, started talking. And so He's talking about what they need to do next. And you need to make sure that you hold on to, you know, fortify and that we need to, con you know, add constant pressure and, and so on and so forth. And so as he starts to talk, someone says, who's Eric? And then someone answers, Eric is the Dominion guy. So obviously I'm taking notes, right? And I'm a, I'm a copious note taker. So I took these notes and, um, and uh, I had Eric, Dominion, and then we're in Denver, Colorado. Because <laughs> they're talking about Denver, they're talking about Colorado Springs. Um, and so, I, but I, I wasn't really focused on him. And so then Eric responds, uh, you know, keeps, keeps speaking. And then someone interrupts and says, what are we going to do if effing Trump wins? And, uh, he responds with, and I'm going to paraphrase this because obviously I didn't write exactly what he wrote, right. <laughs> um, is don't worry about the election. Trump is not going to win. I made effing sure of that. Ha ha ha. Right. And everyone, and then somebody responded effing right. Right. So sorry, I'm not going to cuss on your podcast. Yeah, it's uh, okay. it's just not going to do it. So. Um, so he, Eric continues with the fortifying of the groups and recruiting and he, you know, he's very eccentric and boisterous. 
a lot of hubris, right? They just don't understand that, the, you know, that there's, there's not a lot of security in what they talk. I, for me to get involved in that conversation and get on that, that conference is, is, is telling, right? So then I, I went away and I did my research and I was able to uncover 13 Antifa journalists, not just through that call, but through other things. Um, and, uh, so I, I did the research on Eric. And so it was really simple. This is what I did, right? I put in Eric into Google search, Eric Dominion, Denver, Colorado. <laughs> Not very clever, right? I mean, I, I, that's how it all started. Mm -hmm. And it came up with uh, this gentleman named Eric Coomer. So Eric Coomer uh, is the director of uh, uh, strategy and security at Dominion Voting Systems. And so I did a little research more on him, got his backstory. He has a PhD in nuclear phys ph physics and um, seems like a really, really smart guy, has a very vast history in uh, coding. I did some research on you know some of the patents that he holds and election stuff, but it didn't make sense to me that that would be him. Right. So I I set it aside and said, oh, this guy must work for you know CIA, FBI, someone else. Someone's got to know who this guy is. Mm -hmm. Right. And so the further I got into this, this kind of circle, this kind of mulling, um, the, the, the less I was inclined to think that he was any very important. I didn't know Dominion was in multiple states. I didn't even, I didn't follow the whole election system, right? Mm -hmm. uh, shame on me and shame on the rest of America for not paying attention to this too. Yeah. So, uh, so then I got on, uh, a, uh, it was, uh, October 15th, I spoke at the FEC United meeting at Bandemir Speedway. Um, we had a uh, recording that Eric Trump did for FEC, actually for Tammy Bandemir, but he mentioned FEC United. It was it was a great night and a lot of people there. But at that meeting, I called out the journalists that work for Antifa. And I said very clearly, we're coming for you. If you want to write bad things about us because you're Antifa, we're coming for you. We're going to I'm going to make sure everyone knows who you are. Right. And by the way, I run a data company, so good luck to you, right? Yeah. So um, from there, they started, again, the same, uh, you know, characters started then creating this hysteria that, oh, Joe's going to attack journalists, right? So I got calls from journalists everywhere, and I go, that's not what I said. Now, I can send it to you, but that's not what I said. Yeah. In, in typical Antifa style, they create more rhetoric, right? More lies uh, um, about people. And frankly, I've been undeterred, right? So... Fast forward. Well, it's, it, you know, it, it is a uh, very deliberate gaslighting campaign. Hundred percent. Yeah. And and frankly, it is a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a conspiracy when people come together and actually do things to harm our country. Yes. Right. And twenty twenty, you couldn't have written this in a hundred years. Um, but Orwell did back in nineteen, you know, with nineteen eighty four. Oh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. He wrote this. He told us what was going to happen, and it's happening. Right. So it, it it. But as fast forward to Friday, right after the election. I went to bed thinking, all right, Trump's got this. He's winning, right? I went to an election party. Everything looked good. Statistically speaking, it, it didn't align with what I thought he would win by. So I thought it'd be 331 electoral votes that he would win by. Mm -hmm. um, I did actually predict a landslide because I have access to data all over the country, right? Now, I predicted that he'd win in 2016. I did. And I was right. And I showed up at the GOP event in Colorado and I was like high fiving people. And they're like, oh, we're going to have Hillary Clinton. I was like, <laughs> no, we're not. We're not going to have Hillary Clinton. And, and so, uh, I, you know, I remember it, it is ingrained in my head, but on Friday I get a text message and a call from a friend of mine and he sends me this thing on, um, this uh, article, um, in Georgia that talked about the electronic glitches and the fact they didn't update in the middle of the election day. So, um, and so I, I, I normally, I don't read the articles. I'm just going to tell you, I get three to 400 emails a day and I don't have time. I don't have time to go through every email or every text message. It, it pisses people off, but frankly, I'm just really busy. I have lots of things going on, as you do, right? Um, yeah, a little. <laughs> yeah. Quite a bit. So, so he sent it to me. I start reading it, and Eric Coomer's name pops up inside of the deal, and I was like, "Eric Coomer, what? Are you are you serious?" And so while I'm sitting on the couch, I'm supposed to. I'm going elk hunting in the morning, right? I'm sorry if people that listen to you don't don't hunt. I do hunt. I eat food. My people hunt. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, and uh, so I, I sat down and walked through all the information I could collect very quickly on my phone about Eric Coomer. I remembered that. And I went back through my notes and I was like, all right, this can't be, can't be the same guy. So I started going through everything. I mean, I, I went through every state that, that Dominion's in, all the things that came up on Eric Coomer. I went through uh, uh, 
scraping data on stuff like uh, Reddit handles and Twitter handles and 4chan. And I wanted to just gather all the information dating back to early 2000 um, for um, Eric Coomer. And the deeper I got into it, the worse it got, right? Because he would, had his fingerprints everywhere. Now, again, I didn't have information to show that he was an anti-Trump or had anti-Trump sentiment yet. I didn't, I wasn't there yet. I just had enough information to show that this is a single cog on the wheel that has his name in every state. Now, if, if Dominion voting systems, if he's the, the director of strategy and security, right? Security. So, and by the way, if you look at some of the patents he's written, which I did, I, I dove into that or, or that he's involved in, and you look at the people that are associated with him with those patents, it would scare you. Matter of fact, it would scare all of America if you just took the time to look up those people. So I did. I just looked up those people. I'm sitting on the couch. I'm gathering information. And then I said, I got to get access to a social media platform. I got to get access to something. So I gained access to his Facebook profile. And I was like, legally, by the way, I just want to be clear. I was legal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in gaining access to his profile, it was unbelievable. Like I, I've never seen such hate and vitriol come from a person who seems to be having sensibilities together that is intelligent, right? Here's a guy that has a PhD in, in uh, nuclear physics, and he's talking about F Trump bunker, you know, B. Uh, on June 2nd, he actually reposted the Antifa manif manifesto letter to Donald Trump. And yeah. I was like, what, what? And then just before that, in May, he put posts up of YouTube videos or songs of F the police, F the USA. Um, yeah, here we go. Here's some. Now, before you put some of these up, we actually have people's name on the bottom in the comments. I think we have to gray those out. Gotcha. Um, but um, he started putting up some pretty crazy stuff. So if you'll go to, let me kind of, so you can show this to your audience. If you go to capture 2020, Okay. Um, and so they can actually see this. This is something he put up on the 20th of, or excuse me, the 31st of May. Is this is Capture 20 you want me to yeah, put up? Yeah, Capture 20. Capture yeah. 20. Okay, hold on. And by the way, can you just repeat to people what his position was with Dominion? Actually, so his, his position depending on where you go, is the vice president of security, vice president of strategy. Then through the election process over the last 12 months, it's gone to, now he's not the director of, of uh, now, now he's the director of strategy and security. Mm -hmm. But Michelle, what if I told you that he's actually a major shareholder? <sighs> yeah, he is. Jaw drop floor. What if I told you that he owns the patents in other that are actually associated with other voting systems that are out there in the market now that are actually <laughs> taking care of the states. Remember that the, the reason why we have state elections the way we do for a president is to maintain individual individuality, right? To maintain that independence from any sort of things that could happen. No cog to the wheel is actually held together so that you don't run the risk of what we are dealing with in this election, right? But Dominion is in 40 states. They handle most of the election elections in 28 states. Yes. Now, so people need to, 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 I just want to underscore that and put an exclamation point because the market share of Dominion is why yeah. this uh, reaches from conspiracy theory to conspiracy truth. It is truth. 100% truth. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I would, I'm betting everything on it. I'm betting everything on it. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm betting everything on it. And again, I wasn't looking for Eric. Right. I wasn't looking for Eric. I wasn't looking to, to ruin anybody's life. I wasn't looking to, as a matter of fact, I'm the opposite. I'm known in my community as being someone that gives generously in almost every environment. Like nobody could ever say, oh, Joe is, he, he's only doing this because, you know, he wants notoriety. I don't need notoriety and I don't need money. I don't need either one of those things. Yeah. Right. And I don't, I didn't ask for it. Right. I'm, I'm very happy just silently going through my life, helping people and being that person that lives a legacy for, for my family. Right? Yes. So in other words, in other words, this story found you <laughs> not the other way around. Uh, okay. So we've, we've uh, brought up this um, screen cap from Eric Coomer's Facebook page. Explain what this is. 
So you're actually, if you go 20 and then we can show 21. So this is actually a video. If you go, if you go watch the video, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's the innuendo. It's what he's actually saying by putting this video up. So if you yes. go to Skin Capture 2021, mm -hmm. you'll be able to see that um, uh, that he has another one that I'm going to try and follow you at the same time. Yeah, hold on. Uh, let's see if I can do it this way. 21. There we go. Um. Yeah, so F the USA. So this is a guy that's responsible for the strategy and security of election machines across the country. And by the way, in the last four years, they have signed up all of these swing states, right? Mm -hmm. And those, those election devices, while you're voting, are hooked up to the internet. Look, Michelle, this is not high. I am not, this is not, I'm not making any of this up. This capture that you have is his Facebook page. And yeah. by the way, if he's not guilty, why is he scrubbing the internet now? Why did he take down everything from Dominion showing up on his, uh, even like uh, lead candy that shows up who's actually executives and in, in, in environments taking that down, going even one step deeper, removing all of his Reddit handles, moving all of his Twitter handles. And some of them are disgusting. Removing all the stuff out there that he has, that he's been out there doing this with a massive amount of hubris, right? Mm -hmm. And we haven't even gotten to the juicy ones yet. But I mean, you go to 22, same thing, right? And and so, by the way, the whitewashing happened at not long after you started tweeting about it. Right. Yes. Right. right. Oh, no, no. He definitely knows that. He definitely was listening to my podcast. He has listened to my podcast. Again, remember, I run a, a data company, right? Mm -hmm. So if you don't know that, think that I can actually ga gather and, and get to information where I can see what people are, are doing, I, I can, right? Mm -hmm. and, and people would say, okay, well, Joe, Joe's a white guy. Well, let me just tell you a little bit about white guy Joe. So my dad's black, my mom's white, my whole family's interracial. And, and if you want to think that, you know, I, I can't understand the plight of accountability with the police. My brother was murdered by a police officer three years ago, right? Sorry I that. still, I still back the blue, right? I, I have, everything's individual. Like we, we talk about journalists. There are some good journalists. We just can't seem to find them in the sea of bad journalists, right? I mean, that's, that, that, that's the problem we face today, yes. but, but so I have my sensibilities to me. I have the fact that, you know, they, they've tried, these journalists have tried to call me a racist. They've called to call me many things and it can't stick. Cause I'm like, Oh, that, that doesn't work. How'd that work out for you? <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't phase you. No. So, he, so here's the Eric Coomer post. Um, it's uh, you know, classic anti-cop, uh, vitriol. This is NWA. <laughs> I lived yeah. through the nineties in, in Los Angeles. So I know, <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. if you go to the uh, number 25, mm -hmm. right, you will actually see him comment on that one. Okay. Right. And you'll, you'll get a feel for um, kind of the things that are, that, that he, how he feels about it. Right. Right. It's and just he, seething and over the top. Yeah. So he did this. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm effing over it. And then somebody says, that was obvious when you brought in iced tea jokes aside. I totally agree. And then he says, uh, Cop Killer is a great song regardless of the way iced tea has turned out. Right? Right, right. I, I mean, this is a guy that that is not nonpartisan. This man is not nonpartisan. This guy is on, he is on a mission to make sure that the only opinion that anyone hears or that anyone can actually accept is his own. And you would say, Joe, come on, that's not true. Well, it actually it is. So if we go down to, and I'll, I'll put this, I'll let you put this up here. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can find it. Um, that's not it. And, and I sent you the file. So just so everyone listening, Michelle has 80 of these. 80, 80 of these, yes. Right? Um, and uh, uh, By the way, you just showed so much foresight in capturing these because they would have otherwise gone down the rest of the rabbit hole with yeah. all of the other whitewashed uh, information about this guy. Right. And there's no so. way he can escape this. He can't. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which is why you're being silenced, Joe. <laughs> right. Because you, you got the goods. So if you go to, um, 
if you go to number 72. Now this goes all the way back to 2016. So the reason why I'm, I'm going to this is because this shows that his rage towards people that disagree with him grew, right? So this is what extremism, this is what happens in extremism. Now I spent many years in the Middle East and in Africa, right? Uh, working in conflict areas. And so I understand how extremism starts to just, it starts to fester, right? You start to create your own reality. And that's really what's happened in our country. Mm -hmm. So this is a um, rant. He, he says rant, Facebook friend land open call. If you're planning to vote for this autocratic, narcissistic, fascist, uh, asshat, blowhard, and his Christian jihadist VP pick, unfriend me now. No, I'm not joking. I'm not for reason, political discourse, and healthy debate. No, I'm all for uh, reasonable discourse and healthy debate. I'm looking at you and he names people. I disagree with you three on so many philosophical grounds, but respect your opinions. Only an absolute effing idiot could vote for that windbag F tard fascist racist F. No BS. I don't give a damn if you're a friend, family, or random acquaintance. Pull the lever, mark an oval, touch the screen for a carnival barker. Unfriend me now. I have no desire whatsoever to even interact with you. You are beyond hope, beyond reason. You are controlled by fear, reaction, and BS. Get your S together. Oh, and if that doesn't persuade you, F you. Seriously, this effing ass clown stands against everything that makes this country awesome. You want in on that. You deserve nothing but contempt. And he goes on and on and on, right? Yeah. This is 2016, 2020. Fa fast forward on it. The guy is literally talking about killing the president, F the USA. I, that's what he evolved into. Yes. Right? Right. And, there's, and there's plenty of more in this deal that would just blow your mind on the comments that he said. And, and I go ahead. Sorry. And again, just just to repeat for people, if you're just tuning in, this is Eric Coomer. He is a top official. And Joe, you've mentioned now he is a shareholder in yes. Dominion Voting Systems. This is not some 19 year old liberal undergrad at Harvard. This is a patent holding nuclear physicist who was uh, leading conference calls, planning calls, essentially, and, yeah. uh, you know, stoking calls, right? I guess, you know, cheerleading calls for Antifa types. And you infiltrated these calls before Election Day. We're talking about late yeah. September when these were happening. Uh, and you got to hear the, the unhinged rantings of this lunatic in charge of security at Dominion Voting Systems. And, and it gets, it gets worse. Like we, we, we literally, worse. and, and I'm going to, uh, if you go to capture number 56, okay. um, this is, uh, and, and by the way, this, this is not, in my opinion, this just shows the, the, in the darkness. And I actually did analyze this picture all the way down to what he has on the shelves and everything else, but I'm not going to go into that because that that'll freak you out. And then people will be like, ah, it's gotta be conspiracy. Nope. It's not. But I want you to see this picture. Ah! <laughs> what is this? That's, that's Eric Coomer. Ah, are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> so his his mind is, you know, I've seen people get to the point where everything is negative and negative eats at your soul, right? I've seen it happen, right? And um, I was able to research everything from ex-girlfriends that he has to his parents to, I mean, I did a lot of research. Now, I don't want to bring any family into it because he's responsible for his own behavior. But I'll tell you, it's it's just a dark. There's just a darkness that exists in what he writes. Um, there's a darkness that exists in in how he behaves. It's an unhinged. Um, it, it's unhinged. I mean, I don't know how to. I don't know how to put it any other way than. Or at least, I, I'm sure you have people in Texas, right? So we can probably go to that one. He loves people in Texas. I mean, he talks about people in Texas as if they're pieces of garbage. It's, okay. it's uh, what number is that? Um, that is, let's see if I can find it. We do have somewhere. lots of Texas um, viewers right now. If you're, uh, if you're from Texas, give me a shout out. Just yeah. uh, uh, type T in comments, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter listeners. You're going to love this. Number 38. All right. And this is crazy. This is how he sees people. This is how he sees people. All right. All right. Let's see. 
the you said 38 yes ma'am all righty get this one up okay here we go and uh, I, I can read it. this is in 2017 right so he's down there selling voting systems by the way just want you to know so I, I, I got access to RFPs. I got access to court documents. Uh, I have access to the what he did in Arizona in 2019 to implement those voting systems in Maricopa County. The one that we're having a problem with. Go figure. That's the one you're having a problem with. That, that's the one that has leaned Trump uh, dramatically during the election. I want to be clear. I support President Trump. But I support free and fair elections more than I support President Trump. So if Biden would have won legally, right, I would have taken my sandwich, right, and walked home and said, look, we, we've got to do a better job of having a vision for America that people want to buy into. But when you have so many things that are wrong and the American voice is suppressed, you have nothing but you, that you can do other than stand up. Mm -hmm. So, but this particular one, do you want to read it? You want me to read it? You go ahead. Okay. So this one says, ah, Texas, the land of racists, idiots, and misogynists. In two hours, I've heard what's wrong with having a relationship with another powerful country, Russia, in, in parentheses. I love Trump. Goddamn women's just done know her to listen, how to listen. You know, darling? And he does this in a, in a language that you really can't. You're pretty. Wish we didn't have to tip them. Them robots is coming. And then hashtag F you. Yeah. This is how he sees everyone but himself and people that agree with him. Right? Yes. Now, now I have a friend that's a psychologist. I sent it to him first. And I said, hey, listen, do me a favor. I want you to review these. And he came back and he says, that is sociopathic. That is someone that literally does not have a firm grip on reality. So this is the guy that is the director of strategy and security. Now, I'm not a psychologist, so I do ask other people for advice. Right. And I've only asked one. So maybe I need to ask 50 because then uh, I have a proper analysis on whether or not it's accurate. But you can't have someone that's thinking this that yeah. is responsible for our elections. Yeah. Right. And if yeah. you go to number 37, mm -hmm. okay. This is in 2017. And he's in Nevada, by the way. You'll notice that this one is in Hayfrump, Nevada. He's actually sitting in Nevada. What happened in Nevada, Michelle? Do you remember what happened in Nevada, what we're dealing with right now? Yeah. Do you know what election machines are, are, can't pass the Benford uh, Law um, so, uh, study? Nevada. Yes. Arizona. Yes. yes. Wisconsin. Yes. Michigan. Uh, Pennsylvania. Georgia. All all Dominion states, but all as Dominion you, states. But as you say, he, this Carrick Coomer, had patents um, related to other voting software systems that are used in other voting systems yes. at other counties. Yes. So we're only we're focused in on Dominion. I'm gonna I'm gonna say this on your show. If Eric Coomer is listening, I suggest before they Clinton you that you actually get in and have a conversation with the prosecutors about what's going on. Because I know that based on other things that you wrote here, that the people in your company think the same way you do because you actually wrote it in your own Facebook page, right? And the amount of hubris that you had to have in order for you to write those things, the fact that you didn't care what people thought, that they'd never get, you know, catch on to you while you sit in there and they prop you up as the doctor of nuclear physics. That's what they did. They, they propped you up, right? And you have all these things. You're either the one that's responsible for it, which is what it looks like, or you have other people that need to take the fall with you and that might lessen the the opportunity for you to get the death penalty because frankly i think the treason is punishable by death if if you actually uh, are the linchpin in all this now I, i'm not telling you what to do but if i were you i definitely wouldn't just be scrubbing the internet i would be getting your butt in there and having a conversation with with the feds with the mm -hmm. department of justice but so, so the, here here's another post obviously this is from eric on in the 17th again in nevada uh, in other news uh, there be some serious uh, effery going on right here, fueled by our Cheeto in chief, stocking lie after lie in the flames of Kabak. Chris Kabak, right? Kobach, yeah. Mm -hmm. You want something serious to worry about? This is it, right? So he is saying that he is the truth. I can't even. And this this is from Washington Post. The voting commission is a fraud uh, itself. Shut it down. If we don't have a voting commission, just so we're clear, <laughs> we have no no checks and balances. Right. So just keep just keep in mind how deep this goes. This is a deep deal. 
And by the way, if what I'm saying is false, Michelle, why are people trying to say they want to kill me? You so you you you're getting the pile of death threats. Uh, pile is probably not the word for it, but yeah. Now that what they don't understand is that I own a gun store and range, right? I'm heavily fortified. I know how to shoot a gun. I've spent lots of times in places that they don't want to go, right? Places that, by the way, don't have a republic, don't have the ability to have free and fair elections, yes. right? They don't. Nobody even knows what it looks like, especially these little crybabies from the basement that run around with Antifa. Right. I have no fear. I fear no man, right? And God will protect me until he, until it's my time, and then it's okay. But I'm still going to put the stuff out there. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, of course, the gaslighters will say that uh, by you asserting your rights to defend yourself, you're the inciter of violence. You come to my house and I'll show you the inciter of violence. Right. I'm going to tell you right now, right. Like, you, you, you do something to affect someone around me, right? I, I will not ask questions. You, you, people you don't come to my house looking for a conversation because I don't want one, yeah. right? You want to have yeah. a conversation? Send me an email, right? Or call me and tell me how you're going to hang me from a tree. That went really well. That was by a really the, good conversation. Yeah, yeah. By the way, for those who are just joining or if you joined in late, all of this stemmed from Joe um, trying to understand the journalists who are essentially Antifa operatives. And there have been a couple of other really brave people who have infiltrated, like you did, um, other rings and, and rackets between Antifa and the media. There was a researcher, an independent researcher, Ian Linehan, who published his own work because he had infiltrated mm -hmm. many of these circles uh, in a magazine called Quillette, a website called Quillette. And he was uh, zapped off of social media, death threats against him as well. Uh, and you, you really are over the target. I keep saying yeah. this about uh, all of the people I've interviewed over the last week. You know you're over the target. And this one is such a sore spot. I mean, it is the key, the collaboration between the fourth estate and the violent mob. Yeah. And it's, you know, frankly, you know, people are, are submitting, right? I, I had a conversation with someone, Michelle, at a event where I was asked to speak to 100 people. And I got to tell you something else about me. I'm actually not an extrovert. I'm an introvert. I'm a guy that literally likes to, I, I don't particularly like putting myself out there. I just felt the responsibility. And I felt that God was telling me that this is, I gave you these gifts. You have to use them. Right. But I was at this meeting and this woman goes, this is just a pacifier. We need to give them a, pa we need to give um, them a pacifier. We, 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 if we give them this election, then they'll, they'll calm down. They'll calm down. And I go, you have no idea what you're saying. You don't know what you're saying. You don't actually know what you're asking for. They're never going to, they're never going to retreat. If you give them this, it's going to be more. We're going to be a socialist society. You're going to give up your free and fair elections forever. And beyond that, it's going to get even worse because you're not going to have opportunity. Your kids aren't going to have opportunity. Your grandkids are going to have opportunity. You're going to become an ant on the ant farm that generates revenue for them, right? They get to decide whether or not you're successful. They get to decide what opportunity you have. And I grew up poor. So you're not talking to someone that, doesn't understand opportunity. I just claw my way to the place where I am today, right? And so everything I had, I've been blessed with by God, but I had to work for it. I had to work for it. So do you want to be the one that that only gets these these oligarchies that actually have opportunity, these billionaires, which by the way increased eight hundred forty five billion dollars, and while ever, all these small businesses were collapsed, right? This this is you have to make a decision. You have to make a decision right now what you want. There is no retreat. There is no surrender. President Trump is fighting for us. We have to fight for him. And I don't care if it was someone else that was in that chair, right? If they're fighting for us, we have an obligation to fight for him. We have an obligation to uncover these things. This is the legacy of your life. This is the test that I think God puts you through. Is it, can you stand up when things are against you? Can you stand up when people, frankly, are doing, the, doing bad things? I think it's our obligation to do that. It shows the courage. Courage is more infectious than fear. Yes, and you've got the exact proper framework on this. It is a fight between good and evil, not just between right and left. I, and if you don't fight it now, it I mean, I hate to be a pessimist about this, but all the, f the factors that led to this manufactured crisis 
have been coming to a boil for 30, 40, 50 years, whether, I mean, it's everything that you concentrate on with FEC United. And by the way, I want to recommend that people go to FEC United. The F stands for faith. The E stands for education. The C stands for commerce. These are the things that we pursue in our lives to achieve the American dream. It's what my own parents did when they sacrificed everything to come here from a foreign land. And I've been mentioning, of course, that they escaped a banana republic to yes. make their home in a constitution republic and if we don't have free and fair elections that's it game over and that's why you're risking everything to get this information out there so i i, I do want to say this because i think it's going to be important so i i started uh, conservative daily 11 years ago i've used the alias or moniker joe Otto as a as a uh, underneath that um and in conservative daily we 780,000 members uh were in you know we've we, we now have a podcast obviously that has become pretty popular um, over the last six months. But under Joe Otto, I am Joe Otto. So Joe Oltman, I'm the real life person of Joe Otto. Um, it's taken me 11 years to come out. Um, but uh, I did because I think I was forced to. I was forced to say, look, I, I finally have to put a, a face and name to all the efforts that we put up there. And by the way, at Conservative Daily, we fought against Republicans too. We fought against rhinos and people that have worked against the better interest of people. So I don't believe in what's popular. I believe in what's right. So what's right is rarely popular. What's popular is rarely right. And sometimes you have to fight against the grain in order to create success for our society. I don't think that there's a lot of people out there that have the courage that you have and that President Trump has, but that, that becomes infectious if more people stand, stand up and go forward. So absolutely. So let's talk about the deplatforming. You were not told by Twitter why they unilaterally zapped your account. Uh, what time was it uh, that this happened? Just it was last night. Yeah. So yeah. last night around 10 o'clock at night, I'm actually on Twitter and I'm, I uh, was, uh, um, was retweeting um, uh, Rogan O'Hadley's uh, tweets. I'm like a big fan of his. So I like always like his stuff. And I, you know, when, when all this stuff came out, I, so I was retweeting that. And then all of a sudden uh, someone was attacking Tig. Uh -huh. And so I responded to them saying, how would you like this, this domestic terrorist or something, this right wing extremist uh, come into a classroom? Cause he went into classroom on veterans day to talk to kids about the sacrifice that veterans make. And so I responded to that. As soon as I responded to that, boom, I, my whole page came down um, and it said, you know, you've been suspended. And I'm like, what? What did I say? Because I make sure, because they've done this twice before. Like I called out Antifa. They suspended me for a week just for calling them out. I didn't, I didn't violate any laws there either. Right. But if you go to the, the Colorado Springs Antifa page on, on Twitter, they have it. Their, their moniker at top says doxing, right? You know, people get doxing. You're not allowed to do that per their own deal, but they do it and they let it stay up there. Yes. Which, what does that tell you about Twitter? What does that tell you about their leadership? What does that tell you about their organization? Twitter is Antifa. You can say whatever you want, but they are Antifa. So, uh, so, so yeah, I can't, I can't get to my messages. I can't get to notifications. Um, I did file an appeal. I did talk to my attorneys this morning. And the bad thing about me is that I will burn cash at an alarming rate to hold people responsible, right? And I've got an army of 90,000 or so people in Colorado that are part of FEC. We did that in 25 weeks, by the way. 90,000 people that will also get behind me and help us fund something that goes after Twitter. So we're going to go after Twitter if they don't turn it, you know, reverse it. And who knows if they will, right? They, they think that they have the same hubris that Eric Coomer has. I'm untouchable, right? But are you? But are you? Yeah, that's right. In the meantime, you are on Parlor, uh, continuing to share information. Yeah. And uh, I had also shared one of your tweets. Yeah. And uh, it, it has 1,700 retweets and 2,500 likes. And people are still trying to find it and find out what happened. Um, but they can find you on Parlor now. And I just want to bring up that screen as well. At Joe... Oltman, J-O-E-O-L-T-M-A-N-N. -N. Uh, we have about 10 minutes left, and I wanted to give you an opportunity to talk about the work that you've been doing on the ground in Colorado with FEC United, because it is such a fresh breath, breath of fresh air. It's the kind of organizing that I've been involved in for as long as I've been out of the closet as a conservative activist and journalist, but it's also the kind of, of on-the-ground activism that so much of the GOP establishment has spurned. Is that your experience as well? Yeah. Yes. Um, 
So I think that the problem with uh, conservatives, people that are constitutionally centered, is that we eat our own, that our, our, our ambitions become greater than the ambitions of others. Right. And I think that the, the problem with that, that the, the, the danger of that is that we can't ever get along long enough to actually make progress. And so the left is a very weak and ineffectual voice, but collectively they become an effectual voice. They've infiltrated our education. They've infiltrated, um, uh, you know, our uh, technology and media. And when I say infiltrated, they had a plan. They've been planning this for 25 years. And what conservatives fail to do is we fail to plan. We wake up every three and a half years and we want to say, let's, Let's have an, a let's let's talk about this election. Ooh, so we wonder why we keep losing in certain key environments. Uh, we're not in technology, so I'm in technology and I'm a conservative, but I'm one of the I'm one of the rare ones that speaks up in this environment. So, so FEC United was bent on the idea that we could create a law and policy center that we could actually have teeth in what we do, that we could fatigue the left individually and collectively by pointing out things that they do that are unconstitutional. Now, um, faith is. You saw through this pandemic in many states, not states like North Dakota, which I applaud the governor, right? I think she's going to have an influx of conservatives that actually move there over the next couple of years. But um, in other parts of the country, they basically threw the constitution in the trash and says, we know what's best for you. Well, when has the government ever done what's best for us, right? When, have they, when did they grow conscience? The Thursday before they decided to shut down our economy? while they gave big businesses access to uh, basically what it came down to is like a free Black Friday event every day. Well, they shut down small businesses because they said that is where COVID exists. But they also shut down our churches. They shut down our synagogues and our mosques. It's, see, it's not just Christians that should enjoy uh, uh, religious freedom. It's all religions should re that should enjoy that. But they basically said that your spiritual food is not, not important. We need to set that aside. So the organization on the faith side is designed to give them power to stand together. So they can tell, you know, Governor Paul is here. Um, and other governors and other leaders that are uh, unelected bureaucrats that you cannot affect me. You cannot stop me from getting fed spiritually. On the education side, we have massive issues, Michelle, massive. Uh, one of the biggest issues we have is we're going to have a pandemic, one of mental health and, and mass suicide of our young people. If we don't get them back to school normally, not the new normal, right? We, they don't get to change our society, right? And change our kids. And the other part of this is, is that kids are being indoctrinated. Second grade, we have systems out there called Queer the Classroom, where they're recruiting kids to be gay in second grade. Now, if you're gay, you're gay, right? That we have, we have gay, straight, uh, black, white, green, yellow, purple people at, at my office, but you don't recruit a kid in second grade and try to change their mindset so that you can actually create more of an opportunity for you in the future. To me, that's sick, right? You don't get to actually, as a teacher's union, actually tell the parents or the kids and, and go against the teachings that the parents have, have tried to teach them, especially based on faith. You don't get to do that. So they have a union on the teacher side. We're going to have a parent's union. We're going to have a union for parents that allows for them, again, to take access to the Law and Policy Center and actually go after them, not in one state, but every state. So we started it here to be a national organization. And the last, or the last two parts of the organization are on the commerce side, where were the, the chambers of commerce and the union, or the, excuse me, the, the associations when the pandemic lockdown happened for small to medium businesses? It wasn't there. It was absent. So you pay them to do nothing. So we're going to become a strong force in bringing those businesses together, which we've already started doing, right? And we're going to make sure that we have the ability to stand together and we can stand against this, this fear tactic that they, that they have for businesses where they walk in and take away your your license and say, Hey, look, that piece of paper you have, the fact that you can't, now you can't feed your kids. How about that? You have to do exactly what we say, or we're going to shut you down. Well, they're shutting us down anyway. Right. And they're handing back the keys of the kingdom to these big businesses. So then we have a policy and politics side that is not, not defined in the FEC name. And that is electing people inside of our communities that actually stand for and come back to the community and, and frankly, do the biddings of the people within the community rather than what they do now, which is listen to lobbyists and special interest groups and do things to adversely affect our community or bark orders down to us as if we're slaves or indentured to them. So we also wanna get people to run for office. And you say, well, I don't, have, I, I don't have any experience. Well, if you haven't noticed, neither do they, right? So it's really important to understand that if you have a heart and you're authentic and you do things for the community, that that'll all play out well when you run for office at every level. So. And then obviously, you know, that our connection with uh, UADF, United American Defense Force, that is the thing that 
John Tig Tigan runs. It is a side-by-side -side organization with FBC United. It is its own organization. But these are people that are set there. It's not a militia. They're set there to defend the community, in the community, to make sure that we can keep what we've worked our entire lives for. Right, so the people can't come in with bricks and spray paint, spray paint, and destroy our communities and loot our businesses. Right, we're not going to have a conversation. We're not there to have a conversation at that organization. The only thing that they're there for is just to protect the people that are actually working hard, that go home every day to their families and just want to have life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. Right, so so that that really is as a whole what the organization is. We're 25 weeks old. We have meetings every week, um, and frankly, we've we've had. You know, it, we're, we had a malleable organization. Now we have a, a really good board structure. We've been able to bring people on the board that I think represent people in the community at, at different levels. And, and that type of leadership has allowed for me to become a part of something greater where it's not about me. I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about everything that, that represents us in our community. And if we can do that, I think FEC will be just a force to be reckoned with in the future. Well, it's such a blessing to have you enter this battle space. And I did not know that about you, that you consider yourself more of an introvert. I am the same way. And there was a fork in the road early in my professional, political, personal life where I had to make a choice. If I didn't stand up, if I didn't uh, use my own voice and the talents uh, such as they are that God gave me, then it would be a waste. And it would be a sin, uh, essentially, uh, to turn our backs on on that this role that uh, we were meant to play, um, and the, the the things that you're doing with FEC United are so so important. And one of the things that so many of us who've been involved in grassroots politics on the right have prayed for are tech savvy entrepreneurs. Uh, we have been un outgunned uh, on this, and it's more important than ever um, that you're in this space and that you're using the skills and the knowledge that you have because of the deplatforming, because of the of the massive unpersoning of ordinary citizens. And for too long, all of the people who have enjoyed the largesse of big tech, of the oligarchy, and that includes many people with R's by their name, many people who yeah. have pretended to fight uh, on our side, but who have sold out, you know, who've sold out their souls, who have cashed in, who've forgotten why they were sent to Washington in the first place. Um, they've forsaken uh, ordinary citizens who are exercising their first and second amendment rights, all of their constitutional rights, and are now being deprived of that essential liberty. And so every single piece of what you do, faith, education, and commerce um, are so important. Then, And then of course, I cannot tell you, Joe, we haven't had a time, had, had time to talk it, uh, you know, privately. So I've got to say it publicly. Having Tig Tigan lead UADF, again, it's a vacuum that needed to be filled. Uh, and the vilification that you and he and all of the patriots who've joined that cause out there is only going to ratchet up as you become more and more effective. So God bless you for what you're doing. Yeah, God bless you and the voice that you have and how you use it. I'm, I'm uh, Obviously, I've been a huge fan and uh, I've read your book. I actually, if I could say this, I sat across the hall for, or the aisle from you on an airplane and I was like, Hey, how you doing? Michelle? And you're like, I was like, I'm reading your book. And then I went to an event and uh, you signed a book for me and I was like, mm, I'm, I've been reading your book. So yeah, Very it's, cool. uh, it's, I appreciate uh, that. I've, uh, but I'm not a stalker. I'm not that guy. <laughs> <laughs> we're, well, we're I just attend those events and see you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're compatriots. And, uh, you know, uh, I think the other thing, too, here is strength in numbers. And we're leading into tomorrow. There's going to be a nationwide rally in D.C. I've got to be here in Colorado, but I'm glad that, uh, you know, many people will be at their state capitals uh, over the weekend. And that show of force is so important because we're litigating this not only in the court of law, not only in the court of social media, uh, but also the court of public opinion. Uh, and so it's important to show up and be counted. Yeah. So now I'm out, by the way, on conservative daily. So it's kind of a, I, I've gotten like seven, I haven't, I haven't had this many emails on to, to me personally on conservative <laughs> daily ever, but um, I'd love to have you on that show as well. Um, if you, if, if you would. Sounds I fantastic. So I, I highly recommend, and people can find the podcast on all the, the usual platforms, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, you're conservative everywhere. Daily. Yeah. Conservative daily podcast. We're everywhere. We're literally okay. on, uh, we, we do it on Facebook and YouTube and we're going, we're going live on our website and I built new technology for that as well. 
um, but we're also on Podbean, um, all of them, all the, what is it, Podbean, mm-hmm. iTunes, Google Play Store, uh, Spotify. We're on all of them, right? It's kind of cool. Fun. Fantastic. So Conservative Daily at the podcast, FECUnited.com. And everybody, I highly recommend that you follow Joe Altman at Parlor for all the latest on Eric Coomer, Dominion Voting Systems. The truth will get out there. The truth just wants to be free, just like American citizens. So thank you so much, Joe Altman, right, for you. your time. Be safe. All right. Take care. Okay. Take you. care. Bye-bye. You too.